Hello, my name is James Gierke and I'm the Executive Director for Homicide Survivors. I'm here to welcome you to this year's National Crime Victims' Rights Week Candlelight Vigil. Every year we gather here at Children's Memorial Park to remember our friends, our family, our loved ones who were lost to homicide and who we still feel the loss of on a day-to-day -day basis. It's been no secret that this last year has been incredibly trying for our community. There have been challenges that we've all had to overcome and work through together. And still there are numerous survivors in our community in addition who are suffering with the death of a loved one um, through a traumatic loss. So tonight we're going to gather, remember them, honor their memories, and to hold fast to our commitment for a safer and better community. Hello, this is Governor Ducey. I'm honored to be with you today to recognize and celebrate this year's National Crime Victims' Rights Week. 31 years ago, Arizona was among the first states to establish a Victims' Bill of Rights, which guarantees that crime victims can participate in the criminal justice process. This fostered a new era of hope that the rights of victims to justice and due process would be protected. Since then, states around the country have used Arizona as a national model for establishing rights for crime victims. Just last year, we proclaimed November 26th, Victims' Bill of Rights Day, to shed light on this ever-present topic, and we're going to continue to support it in any way we can. As we honor this week, let's continue to focus on supporting victims, building trust, and engaging our communities. I'm grateful for the critical work of Homicide Survivors, Inc. in helping Arizona fulfill those missions. Through advocacy and assistance, they work tirelessly to help meet the long-term needs of families of murder victims. Despite our challenges this past year, victim assistance professionals have continued to provide the crucial services necessary to survivors. There's still more work to be done, but I'm confident that we'll continue to make progress towards protecting Arizona's crime victims and their families. Thank you. Hello, I'm Pima County Sheriff Chris Nanos. This week, we were remembering the victims in Pima County during National Crime Victims' Rights Week. This is a week to remember your loved one or friend that were victims of a homicide. Although we honor and remember them this week, they shall never be forgotten. That is why it's important for us to work with the Homicide Survivors Incorporated. They're that link between the Sheriff's Department and the victims. I can tell you one of the hardest things for my deputies to do is to show up to the door and tell a family member that their loved one has died. It's extremely emotional for the families and for my deputies as well. That is why we encourage and train our deputies to show compassion when dealing with families that are going through this kind of tragedy. Here at the Sheriff's Department, we are a family. I have over 500 commissioned officers at this department, and one of our main goals is to build trust with our community. We want you to trust us in your time of need. We will be here when you call. We've always been here, and we will always be there for you. Thank you. I'm Laura Conover, the Pima County Attorney and I would like to thank Homicide Survivors Incorporated for bringing us here to honor National Crime Victims' Rights Week. Here at the Pima County Attorney's Office, our nationally renowned Victim Services Unit has served victims at the highest levels for decades. They are getting ready to move with me forward into new innovative ways to make sure we meet the needs where they are. Our first in the state model for restorative justice will work hard to make victims as nearly whole as possible again. Restitution is often a misunderstood need. Even a small amount of money can make the difference for a family that's struggling. Also, we are moving steadily further into spaces of prevention. Our new Fraud and Consumer Protection Unit is working hard to educate and inform so that we can prevent victimization before it ever happens. And last, and importantly, 
when serious trauma and harm occurs in our community, our victim advocates meet those needs, incluyendo en comunicación con las familias que prefieren en inglés y las que prefieren en español. I am so with you in spirit right now. Today and always, be well. Good evening. This has been a year of isolation for many, and that falls hardest on those who've lost a loved one. When we grieve a loss, especially a loss that's as sudden, as tragic, and as unnecessary as when someone takes a life, that's a time when we need the support of family and friends. Even a smile or kind word from a stranger can make a difference. And the support this group provides of people who've shared in their own unthinkable loss is invaluable. It's a sad fact that homicide victims have no voice, whether in judicial proceedings or in policy making. Someone took that voice away from us. But everyone who participates in this event, everyone who lifts up the victims' names and tells their stories, you speak for them. You are their voice. I've been alarmed by the rise in homicides nationally and here in Tucson. By far, the most common method used here and elsewhere is firearms. TPD, with the assistance of Patrol Services Bureau Assistant Chief Kevin Hall and Investigative Services Bureau Assistant Chief John Strader, is focused on bringing to bear every promising evidence-based strategy to reduce gun violence in our community. These include place network investigations, that look at the people and places associated with crime, especially violent crime, because often the difference between aggravated assault and homicide is a matter of mere centimeters. We're looking at ways to interrupt this cycle. One way is by partnering with people who have influence over those who may be likely to commit these crimes or to become a victim themselves. Another is by working with community-based violence interrupters credible messengers who offer a different pathway to those most at risk of gun violence, a pathway that does not lead to catastrophic injury, death, or prison. And last, swift and immediate investigation of all gun crimes. While prevention is key, holding offenders of gun violence accountable and providing survivors with a sense of justice for their loved ones is critically important. Our homicide detectives and patrol officers never forget the victims of these crimes or their families. Homicide cases are never closed until an arrest is made. So you are in our thoughts as we work to hold the perpetrators accountable. And you are in our prayers for your comfort, healing, and peace of mind. My name is Laura Salas Rodriguez. On February 26, 2019, my twin sister was murdered in her own home in Tucson, Arizona. And that is one of the shocking things that could ever happen to anybody in their life and you never see it coming. And I wasn't prepared for that because I'll never forget that knock on the door as long as I live. So as the days went on in disbelief and the fog that you're in, um, a few people came by and Homicide Survivors was one of the first to stop at my home and offer me their services. But being that I was in such a fog, I had no idea what they were talking about because everything was a Charlie Brown conversation at that point. As time went by, um, one of the advocates, which is Sylvia Alvarez, continued to encourage me by phone to participate with HSI. I really didn't know what they provided and why I would want to share my personal tragedy with strangers. I didn't want to. But as time went by and Sylvia continued to call, she invited me to this event that was taking place here in this park today. And when I got here, there were hundreds of people here. I had no idea that I was not alone. 
and it was really hard to watch. But as time went by, I still got the impression that I was not alone and there were so many people suffering with sorrow and sadness and I didn't know how to convey that to my own family because I didn't want to make them any sadder than they were. So I joined the group support that HSI provided, was actually at the time in person. And the very first time I went there, I realized that there's people just like me and if not worse. And listening to their stories made me know I was not alone and I could do this with help. But I didn't think I could. I thought I didn't need anybody. But I do. So I continued with the group support therapy and HSI provided me with personal therapy. And we do the virtual support therapy twice a month, which is really uplifting for me. Um, I can remember when I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to face this world without my sister. And being born a twin, that bond is before birth. And I think as humans, we loved each other before we loved anybody else in this world. So being separated by her, she was my go-to person. We were each other's go-to person and to not have that outlet during this investigation and the process, the court, that part was the hardest part because I needed to talk to her and the reality of death and murder it consumes you and I didn't think I could move forward but I was wrong I, I, I can and I know for a fact that my sister as my twin would never want me to suffer like this so I continue to honor her every day of my life even if I wake up and I cry and I will at some point of the day I find a reason to smile my sister was the other half of my happiness and my happiness was removed and I wanted to know why everybody wasn't as tormented by her murder like I was and as time has gone and through hope and healing, I have realized that everybody wasn't her twin. Only I was. Men grieve different. My children grieve different. But it's not to say that they don't hurt because they do. And life without my sister is taking a journey all of itself, all different than what I anticipated out of my life. But I'm getting there to the point where I know I'm going to be okay. I will miss her for the rest of my life, every day. But knowing that she was happy when I was happy, it's allowed me to smile again. I don't feel guilty anymore for laughing or for singing to a song because that's what we did together. It's just different to do it without her. Okay, this is me and my sister at three months old. And um, this was actually a picture that she's had since we were babies and um, she kept it in her house. And I never thought that I would inherit her picture. But I love this picture. And if you can see, my sister was always touching me constantly because that's the way we were in the womb my roommate and there's another picture over here these are events that we spent together this is our 40th high school reunion it was just a couple of days ago <laughs> this is Christmas the last Christmas we spent together in Los Angeles and this is the last day I lived with her in California in 2017. And then she moved here to retire to be with me.
Um, bueno, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es um, Griselda Carrión, um, madre de Yasmín Vega. Um, fue víctima de homicidio um, y quisiera compartir muchas cosas de ella en este momento, pero no puedo por razones emocionales. Um, mi, mi mayor alegría era ella cuando era una niña hasta ser una adulta. Ella falleció a los 19 años estando embarazada. Um, fue algo muy doloroso para toda la familia. Um, no nos hemos podido recuperar de esto y esto no se le desea a nadie. Esperamos algún día poder um, sobrepasar este dolor. Y pues quisiera, como les digo, decir muchas palabras. Lo único que quisiera es también es, uh, decir que la extrañamos mucho. Sus hermanos, uh, familia, su hermana. Y esperamos que algún día se haga justicia. En estos momentos también quisiera darle las gracias a Homicide Survivors por hacer posible um, estas, estas, um, decir estas palabras para que si de algo sirven para alguien, de que todos sabemos en estos momentos lo que se siente cuando alguien pierde a un ser querido. Y pues les doy las gracias a todos a ellos y a su equipo y pues es todo lo que les pues, quisiera, no puedo decir más. Oh. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Okay. Um, bueno, esta es la foto de mi hija. Um, en esta foto tenía 18 años. Uh, fue más o menos llegando para la Navidad. Um, todavía no, no estaba embarazada ella, pero les comparto para que miren um, la persona hermosa que era ella. Y esta otra foto es mi, mi nieto. Esta otra foto es mi nieto Tadeo, um, sobreviviente. Um, él sobrevivió por un año. Y después de eso, fue desconectado del, de la máquina. Su nombre es Tadeo Vega. Nació el 12 de diciembre, el 12-23 del 2017, el mismo día que mi hija falleció. Ana Paola Jaramillo Quintana, Casey Bright, José Moreno, Tyler Thomas, Ángel Isono, Bryson Skinner, Jesús Quevedo, David Wample, Corey Troutman, Omar Rascón, Cristina Nunley, Monique León, David Sargent, Katia Molina Solís, Keenan Poitra, Sabrina Arvizu, Derwin Conde, Rachel Sheridan, James Jimmy Scott, Caden Wittell, Maureen Schultens, Randy Schultens, Eugene Rios, Mark Romero, Ricardo Duran, Jaden Pillars, Thedis Fomesh, Tara Profalt, Matthew Hosford, Tiffany Shaw, Susan Miller, Danny Jackson, Richard Ulibarri, Jose Miranda, Victor Duarte, Caleb Craig, David Nickerson, Caitlin 
Hinson, Elizabeth McKeegan, Aaron Nosp, Marco Orantes, Robert Detweiler, Christopher Moreno, Brian Brown, Jose Arvizu, Rudy Romero, Devonta Miller, Ramon Escudero, Oscar Martinez, Sean Howell, Ángel Bueno, Javier Lugo, Manauri Acevedo, Randy Harris, Edward Latar, Curtis Fanning, Thomas Ross, Cameron Clark, Jackson Clark, Chance Myers, Adam Fallerstein, Casey Matias, Monica Gilkey, Jennifer Brelsford, Bryson Gilmore, Eric Martinez, Tiana Keen, Christian Silva, Dristin Tolba, Joseph Cui, Dale Riley, Daniel Ortiz, Isidiro Hernandez Ortiz, Oscar Licochea, Robert Norwood, Emily Casares, Raquel Gutierrez, Luis Parraza Bautista, Wanda Zhang Pierce, Adam Lopez, Morgan Brown, Andres Trujillo, Jeffrey Ferry Jr., Maliaka Taylor, Maurice Taylor Jr., Heidi Hammonds, Jose Roberto Martinez Rascón, Richard Robles, Christopher Prince, Sebastián Foy, Toby Uribe, Itzel Sánchez, Jeffrey Hunter, Justin Chavez, Johnny Rodríguez, Gina Bisonet, Jose Martínez, Eric Guzmán, Bradley Alex Lewis, Jesús Constantino Sandoval, Tina Goad, Andrew Kislek, Frederick Perry, Javier Monge, Eric Wilson, Forrest Keys, Gerardo Márquez, Reina Cota, Nico Santa Cruz, Luis López Jr., Rudolph Rudy Vega, Anthony Watkins, Nicole Collins, Trevon Lavender, Bernardino Bernie Santa Marina, Christopher Nunez, Megan Broomley, Tyler Tolson, James Minish, Devon Lewis, Deandra Cadena, Wayne Jackson II, Yvonne Leon, Francisco Cisco Santa Maria Aguirre, Cristina Secora, Omar Hernández Altamirano, Carlos Carrillo López, Michelle Sanders, Carlos Lito Chavarría González.